Hello, I'm Dr. Kirsty Miller, Head of the School of Psychology at the University of Lincoln. Welcome to Clearing. I'm here today to talk to you about our programmes and some of the things that make the School of Psychology at the University of Lincoln unique. So Psychology at Lincoln is housed within the Sarah Swift building. We share this building with the School of Health and Social Care. Sarah Swift was opened in 2017. It's a 19 million pound building with excellent teaching, learning and social spaces. The social spaces are great for our students to be able to meet up with friends to discuss assessments and plan work. As well as the more general teaching and learning spaces, we also have psychology specific spaces. These include our two computer suites and our research labs. In our research labs, there is a wide range of equipment such as EEG, dynamic 3D body scanner, psychophysics, a driving simulator, and um, the Mirage, a system that allows us to manipulate visual feedback about your limbs. So why study psychology at the University of Lincoln? The first important thing to note is that all three of our undergraduate programmes are accredited by the British Psychological Society. Now, the BPS accreditation is important because not only do they set standards for resources and staffing, but it also means that any of our students who graduate with at least a 2-2 and pass the dissertation element have the graduate basis for chartered membership of the BPS. This is the first step to because be, this is the first step towards becoming a professional psychologist. If you want to become a professional psychologist, this is likely to involve further postgraduate study. And one of the entry requirements for most postgraduate psychology qualifications is graduate basis for chartership with the BPS. So what do our programmes look like? We have the BSc Psychology, the BSc Psychology with Clinical Psychology and the BSc Psychology with Forensic Psychology. Now, all three of our programmes share a strong foundation of psychological theory and research skills. The difference between our programmes comes in that final level detail. So the Psychology BSc allows you to tailor your experience at second and third year, choosing electives that interest you to deepen your study and understanding within particular topics. With the Psychology with Clinical and the Psychology with Forensic, you've already told us what you're interested in. So those contain core elements of forensic and clinical psychology, exposing you to ideas about what it's like to work as a forensic psychologist and what those clinical skills maybe you'd need to develop if you want to go into clinical. If you want a much more detailed look at what modules are involved in each of our programmes, then if you go on to our psychology web pages, you can see a breakdown of modules at first, second and third year. At first year, seven of the eight modules you'd study are the same across all three programmes. The difference is in that eighth module that you do in semester B of first year, whether that's foundations of clinical, foundations of forensic or foundations of applied psychology. The advantage of this setup means that if you join us on Psychology with Clinical, but actually partway through first year, you realise that actually you want to be able to experience the breadth that you can with the Psychology BSc, you can actually switch between our programmes as long as we have sufficient space on the programme you want to move into. At second year, six of the modules are the same across our three programmes. The other two modules are specialist if you're on the forensic or clinical, but if you're on the psychology BSc, this is where you start to tailor your programme to your interests and you can choose electives for both of those modules. At third year, the psychology BSc allows you to choose six of the eight modules that you'll study. So you really can pick those things that have interested you most across the first two years of the programme. Your other two modules will be made up of your dissertation. If you're on the with clinical or the with forensic, you do still get that element of being able to tailor your programme. At third year, two of your modules will be that those specialisation modules in clinical or forensic, depending which programme you're on. The other four modules you can choose. And again, the range of electives is open to you there. The others we made up, other two modules we made up of your dissertation. So when I talk about electives, what sort of electives can you choose at Lincoln? We have a very wide range. Electives are always based on staff expertise and staff interests. Now, this does mean that electives can change as staff go on sabbatical. We may rest an elective for a year. 
So we can never guarantee that specific electives will definitely be available, but you can see the sorts of electives that we offer. And through our electives, you really do get an opportunity to specialise. Um, so if you're really interested in neuroscience and neurobiology, you can choose things like brain and behaviour, sleep dreaming and circadian rhythms. If development is what interests you, then we have some fantastic modules, autism spectrum disorders and developmental psychopathology that you can study at third year. This is just a small range of the electives that we have on offer. You can get a more indicative idea about the sorts of electives that we offer on our website too. You may be interested in a year out and we have options for you to be able to do that too. So we do have a sandwich course that allows you to take a year out between year two and year three and study abroad. So we've had students this year who have been in Padua in Italy, who have been in the Czech Republic, Malta, etc. for that year out. So you finished year two, you go out for a year and then you return and join year three. We don't have a placement in industry option. However, this doesn't mean that you can't do that. So you can take a break year. You can interrupt your studies at the end of year two and you can either find your own placement for a year or you can be supported to apply for a scheme such as the Government Social Research Sandwich Student Placement Year. We've had great success on this in the past with our students. We've had, it's a competitive scheme and we've had students who have won places on this and have gone to work in DEFRA, the Department of Health, HMRC and the Home Office. And the greatest asset we have at Lincoln within the school is our fantastic team of academics. These are a number of them. There are some additional academics who I couldn't quite fit on the picture. Our academics all teach, so our professors teach as well as our lecturers, um, and all are actively involved not only in research, which is very important to us, but also in student support and developing the student experience. Now, as I mentioned, student support is very important to us, and that's evidence through our tutorial programme. So when you join us at Lincoln, you'd be put in a group of eight to 12 other students and you would be given an academic tutor, one of those members of staff that you've just seen. They'll meet with you every week in first year for a group tutorial and you also have individual tutorials as well. The function of these tutorials is really to help you develop your skills, both academic and study skills. Your academic tutor also becomes your first point of contact. So there's someone who really gets to know you and they'll also provide references, etc. when you graduate and you move on to further work or study. Peer support is very important to us and we developed a peer mentoring scheme over seven years ago. This peer mentor scheme puts you in a group of six to eight other first years and you are mentored by an experienced second or third year student. Second and third years are there to share their experience and to help you with transition into higher education. We try to arrange for your mentors to get in touch with you over the summer period and then you'll meet with them in Welcome Week. They're there to help provide some support and some guidance. Our mentors are there to answer your questions about both the academic side, so which modules um, they found more challenging, the sort of amount of time they spend studying in a normal week, but they can also provide um, answers to those queries that you may have about that transition to university. They can also provide you with guidance and share their experience of that move to university. We've also had very successful peer support schemes for some of the academic elements of our programme as well. So research skills is an area that students sometimes worry a little bit about. Um, in the past, stats mentors have worked really well to help provide some additional guidance and support for our students around stats. Typically, students in psychology are incredibly engaged, both within the school and outside of it. There are lots of opportunities to be involved with things outside of direct academic studies within the school. So, for instance, we have staff student partnership groups that redeveloped our assessment feedback forms. They're the ways that we give you feedback on your assessments that help us to deliver things like our psychology conference um, and provide insights into how we can improve our programmes. There's also lots of opportunities to be involved outside of the school and within the wider university too, um, and even outside of the university and in the student union. So you can see here three of our students, two of them past students who have been actively involved with the student union as president or as vice presidents. Kudzai and Tommy both held student union positions for two years and have now gone on to find full-time work. 
Emma took a year out between second and third year to become student union vice president of welfare and community and she will return to complete her studies in October. So the question I asked early on is why would you choose psychology at Lincoln? We're often asked what is our unique selling point and what makes psychology at Lincoln different and I would say that it's the sense of community that we have here. We try to develop a really strong sense of belonging for both our staff and our students. You can see here some of the comments students have made in the past about how they've experienced this sense of community. Thank you very much for watching our talk. Please make use of all of the links to our Adob Spark, to student testimonials, etc. to provide some more information to help you make your decision about where to study. I hope to see you at Lincoln in October. So something that comes up quite a lot is work experience because obviously you have to go out into the real world when you finish your degree, go and do postgrad or a job or whatever it is that you want to do. And you're quite lucky when you study psychology because you're in a unique position compared to other courses in the fact that you can actually get involved with things to do with specifically the school. So you can take part and volunteer at things like Summer Scientist Week. So children and their families come in every year for a week or so to take part in research and games and activities. You can also help researchers with their research. So things like recruiting participants and collecting and analysing their data. And your help can actually be published in a paper as well, which is goals as a psychology student. But any job that you decide to do, whether it's to do with psychology specifically and research, will give you the skills that you need to do any kind of job that you want to do after. And that's another thing about psychology. You can do pretty much anything you want with it afterwards because you've got all those different skills that you need. Communication, organisation, people skills, math skills and all those sorts of things. So just bear in mind as you go through your degree, whatever work experience you can get is ideal. At university, you have a personal tutor which will be a member of staff from your subject area that will provide guidance to you throughout your degree. During your first year at university, you will meet with them once a week for a small group session. This will help to support the transition into university, provide essential study skills and advise students on higher education. One-to-one -one meetings will ask go over any issues and guide your progress to achieve your goals. Your tutor will be the same throughout your three years at university, so it will become a regular point of contact for you. You can go to your tutor for personal and academic problems. They will either help you themselves or they will be able to direct you to a person or a support service that can. You can email your tutor, visit them during office hours or arrange a meeting, but no matter what, they will be there to support you. A commonly asked question is how much contact time you have on the course and this varies across the different years. So for example in first and second year you can expect to have around eight contact hours per week. This is because you end up taking four modules per semester and from this you have two contact hours per module per week which makes up the eight hour total. In addition to this in first year you will also have a weekly tutorial meeting with your personal supervisor which then brings up the total to nine contact hours. In third year the contact hours decrease slightly and this is because you end up taking three taught modules which then brings up the total to six contact hours. But then the last module is your dissertation module and it is not taught as such. Instead, you'll have an hourly meeting with your dissertation supervisor once every two weeks instead. Overall meaning that in third year, your contact hours are probably between six to seven hours per week. One thing I thought about when looking at different degrees, which I'm sure some of you are thinking about now, is whether it was valuable to take a degree with a work placement year. Now for me, I found that during my summer breaks, I have enough time to fit in work experience. For example, I was able to secure a job working with children and adults with disabilities, and this will be great experience that I can take forward in the future. However, if you decide that you want to have a year out to work in industry, or maybe you want to have a year abroad, this is definitely something that you can incorporate into your degree when you get to that point. So it's not like you have to commit before you start your degree, so whether you want a work placement year or a year out to go abroad, you can decide that when you start your degree and see if it's right for you at that time, which I think is great because there's no pressure before you start to decide what you might want to be doing in a couple years time. 
Hello, so a question we get asked a lot in the course is if there's a lot of maths involved. Now there's not as of maths, but there's a fair amount of stats, but don't panic, because I know that worries a lot of people. Um, there is so much support from uh, the library and from your lecturers to help you understand everything, and you have four research skills modules you do in your first two years to build your understanding of stats, uh, as well as research techniques for uh, your dissertation in third year. So don't panic, because you're in great hands, and um, it's not as bad as a lot of people think it might be. So does your first year count towards your final degree grade? Long story short, no, it doesn't. However, that isn't an excuse just to lay around the house and do nothing. You know, listen to your parents. First year, you do have to work. There is quite a lot of work. This is uni. This isn't school. This is a step up. So basically, how it works is you need to get uh, 40% to pass the year. Obviously, you want to do better than 40%. Um, I'll get on to that in a second. But you need 40% to pass the year. If you don't get 40%, then you have to retake the year, and you don't want that. Um, basically, first year is meant to be the foundation that you learn from in your second and third year. So you want to really engage with the content, learn the content, go to your seminars, go to your lectures and get good attendance because your modules are actually allocated based on how good your attendance is throughout your degree. So it is very important and you do need to do the work. Having said that, first year is a lot of fun, so enjoy yourself. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's Talia and I'm a psychology student in my second year. I'm also the School of Psychology representative for 2019 to 2020. I wanted to tell you a little bit about my role and how I work with the School of Psychology to ensure the student experience is the best it can be. The representation system's main aim is to ensure that every student's academic interests are being represented and also every student voice is being heard. This is why I'm so passionate about my role and why I wanted to get involved in the first place. At the end of the day, it's our student experience and therefore we should have a say in what we like and what we want to see from our degree. The thing that makes my job so much easier is the fact that the School of Psychology is so open to these ideas and suggestions. They want to hear improvements, they want to know what they're doing well and any feedback they can get, they love to hear and they like to improve and work on it in the best ways they can. All of this helps to improve our student experience, which, like I said, is the most important thing. Hello, I'm Dr Rachel Bromnick here at the University of Lincoln, and I'm Programme Leader for the BSc Psychology. Much of my role happens behind the scenes, ensuring that all of your modules are designed and delivered to the highest possible quality, and that your learning is fun as well as educational. Our degree is accredited with the British Psychological Society and that means the modules that we offer will cover those core curriculum areas such as cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, biological approaches as well as the research methods and social of course, very popular topic. When you compare us with other programmes, I recommend that you look at the amount of elective choice that we offer as this is one of the core differences and special things that we offer for studying at the University of Lincoln. So by the time you move through into your second and third year, the large proportion of your degree will be determined by modules that you will choose from a big range of topics, including clinical and forensic in particular, but also the chance to study things like primate behavior and organizational topics subjects that reflect the staff specialities and interests. So a unique part of studying psychology at Lincoln is that elective choice, as well as high quality modules that cover the BPS curriculum. Hi, I'm Dr. Tessa Flack, and I'm a lecturer in psychology here at Lincoln. One of the fantastic things about all of our degree programs are the amazing uh, opportunities that you will have to get involved in real research. We really want our students to be hands-on involved in the research that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So you'll be conducting research projects as part of the core modules in your degree programme. So for example, in research skills in your first year and your second year, where you'll be collecting data from participants and analysing that data. And in second year, you'll actually have a, a massive part in designing that project and, and deciding what it is you really want to test. What do you want to find out? 
And obviously all of this builds up to your dissertation project that you do in your final year. And this project is really about you. What do you care about and what do you want to study? And we're just here to help you build that project. But there are other ways that you can get involved in research as well, outside of those core modules in your degree programme. So you are welcome to volunteer at any time to help a member of staff with their research. But also there are more structured ways. So for example, we have elective modules that allow you to get involved in, in the research that staff are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so an excellent example of that is the research internship elective module. So this module allows you to be an intern in a member of staff's lab. So the fantastic thing about that is you get to pick that member of staff. So you can pick the person whose research you are most interested in. And you just get involved in what they're doing right then. So this could be anything. They could be working on lots of different types of projects um, and they could be at different stages in those projects as well. So you could be helping them design a project, you could be helping collect data. So for example, I have students that work in my EEG lab testing participants for me. Hi, my name's Ellie. I'm a second year psychology student at the University of Lincoln and I'm going to talk to you about the driving simulator. So one of the most frequently asked questions I get in the driving simulator is when can you actually get involved in the research in the psychology building so personally i got involved in my first semester of second year where i took a research internship elective module which allowed me to get hands-on experience in the research that a lecturer was conducting at that time and it's a great way to gain knowledge and experience in a research setting and to gain confidence for your overall university life so there's a massive range of uh, opportunities to get involved in real research, addressing those questions as psychologists we really want to know the answer to. I'm Charlotte, I am one of the psychology technicians and a PhD student within the School of Psychology. One of the great things about studying psychology at Lincoln is our purpose-built building and research and lab facilities that we have. The School of Psychology building is in the centre of the city centre campus um, and it is just in the most beautiful location. We're right on the river, a couple of minutes walk from the high street and the train station as well. The high street is great, it contains a really good mix of your kind of typical high street shops as well as independent shops shops and coffee shops which is really really nice. The city is small enough to explore, there's some great places to go, we've got the castle, the cathedral all up steep hill, lots of parks and green spaces but it also has a really good vibrancy about it which is great. Hi my name is Penny and I'm a second year psychology student at the University of Lincoln and I'm going to talk to you about nightlife. So there are many clubs in Lincoln, there's Scene, Fever and Boutique, Mocha, Home, Circle and The Engine Shed which is actually on campus and these all hold different types of nights every week so there's on a Tuesday there's Union, Wednesday there's Quack, Friday there's Super Bowl um, and these all often have themes so like Beach Theme or like S Club came to Quack once and these are all like within the town centre. The engine shed, as I said, is on campus and they're all within walking distance. So there's no taxi fares, there's no getting, having to split the car ride over there. There's nothing, you can just walk home. And there's a couple of McDonald's on the high street, so there's always food to get and plenty of kebab shops and stuff like that. And it's always felt safe and it's perfectly like enjoyable for a night out. There's also loads of pubs, so there's Two Spoons, there's a Slug and Lettuce that's recently been renovated. It's, you know, there's plenty of things to do, plenty of things to see, and it's just a brilliant nightlife, really. Hiya, I'm Vicky, and I did my BSc Honours in Psychology and my MSc in Forensic Psychology at the University of Lincoln. I have to say that when I started my psychology journey, I had no idea what really I was interested in other than psychology. And the BSc really helped me explore that and see all the different types of psychology, which which led me on to forensic psychology, actually, uh, where I found my passion and kind of did the masters from there. Uh, and it never hindered me in any way. They gave me so much support. And that was one of my favourite things at Lincoln. 
um, that that sense of community, that working together, the collaboration between staff and students, I always felt supported. And honestly, it was the best decision I ever made.